Right. Uh, I'm I'm not surprised at all. Uh, but yeah, this is this is uh, you, you know uh, they have between the, the the smart meters in the home, the smart appliances, the uh, video cameras on the street corners in some places. Uh, and now, like you say, you know, with this, they'll be able to take, uh, the readings, environmental readings, you know, we have that with the SLS camera or, you know, like Bill Chappell has taken the SLS camera and he's added features to it. So when you use this camera, it's also giving you the readings in the room, like the barometric pressure and the humidity. And of course it's mapping out movement and stuff. I can see where they can apply this, you know, and someday that will be the norm. And what's for, SLS for those listeners oh, who don't know right off the tops of their heads? It's, it's a it's a Kinect camera. It, it, it's uh, like PlayStation has those cameras that you could be interactive with where okay. you punch at the screen and it shows you punching. If you kick, it shows you kicking. Uh, and and it's, they use skeleton software with that. And what that does is, so the camera map, the camera sees you, and it, it maps out your body with what looks like a skeleton, like a stick figure. Uh-huh. Uh, you know, and, and that's how this technology can be used for video games and whatnot. The thing was, though, as people were playing games, uh, every once in a while, somebody would notice that a figure or a stick figure would show up on the monitor, and nobody was there to... Uh, uh, produce that stick figure, at least not, uh, a ghostly right. stick figure. Exactly. System so. generated. That we're but. getting into how. So my comment in the article, which I'd skipped over, about these technologies you just referenced, from smart utility meters to smart TVs to Amazon's Echo and Alexa smart smart speaker system. Naive and trusting Americans are rushing to pay good money for bad technology. In this context, bad technology means evil machines. I think this is evil afoot. I think this is all intentional. The, uh, the stated purpose is to collect information about our habits our spending habits so they can sell us more products, products better suited to our needs. Please excuse me. This seems very intrusive and and I'm not the only one who thinks so, but what do other people here think about all this, the wall spying on us? Hi, Jane. This is Tom. Hi, Tom. Um, um, That's a a great article and brings up all sorts of different um, um, cautions, especially like just the basic one of, you know what? What all this input we have to our bodies and our brains, and what does what does that do? You know the 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 different wavelengths that we're exposed to, and um, what 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 happens to us? You know, it, it'd be helpful if uh, somebody would would be able to test that over a long time um, to see how it changes us as human beings. So that, that's one uh, thought I had about it. And I agree with, with both you and, and Kevin about uh, the idea that, uh, yeah, they say it's so for our own benefit that we have these things. But, you know, there's um, everything should be taken with caution and grains of salt with, with this, these new technologies that are coming along. Great. Yeah, I also agree with everybody. I think, I think it's just really creepy. I'm not surprised. I mean, if you look at how how much technology has been out over how many decades and centuries that's used to spy on the American people, so ad- adding this in doesn't surprise me. I think I was a little creeped out knowing that the source of it was Disney, but then again, maybe I'm not so creeped out. Um, I don't. I'm one of those people that would never technically even think about going out and purchasing any of that. So why don't we take a break? It's about that time. Yeah. We'll be right back with Par- you are listening to Paraversal Universe. Uh, we will be right back after this commercial. You are listening to WBHM. 
Digital Broadcasting, Birmingham, Alabama. Thank you for listening to WBHM Digital Broadcasting out of Birmingham, Alabama. The time is 23 minutes after the hour. Welcome back from our first commercial break, everyone. This is Paraversal Universe on WBHM Digital Broadcasting, as well as our affiliates, WCETFM and The Rift. We're your hosts, Kevin and Jennifer Malik, and we'd like to take a minute to thank everyone who makes Paraversal Universe possible including graphic art director Lawrence D. Misa, music theme by Matt Stenz, announcer Frank Lee, producer and CEO at WBHM Kat Hobson, affiliate network owners Howie Odell at The Rift and Michael Vera at WCET, and of course to God in heaven, whose strength beyond strength is stronger than all, for granting us this wonderful show and opportunity here to be with all of you. Amen. And appreciation to all those various platforms we are on, including iTunes, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, Twitch, YouTube, Daily Motion, TalkStream Live, TuneIn, Blog Talk, and Paranormal Radio Livestream app, which is streamed and restreamed from various other outlets all over the world via the internet. This segment of Paraversal Universe is brought to you by the UFO Wisconsin Research Team, Wisconsin's alternative to MUFON. And okay, back to the Paralogian Report on Paraversal Universe. We were joined uh, with Gene, or by Gene Broida, Kat Hobson, and Tom McGuire. And uh, we were talking about uh, smart walls and the smart wall technology when we left for our commercial break. Right. Um, and so uh, we're going to wrap that up. Uh, Kat had yet to chime in. So, Kat, what do you think about that? Right. Thank 
exactly. <laughs> to understand that this is not something that is going away and it's not something that is limited. We are completely surveilled, you know, from the spy technology that they have. They can, they can look in your bedroom window and do, I guess, when they're looking for someone. So, Jean, that was a very interesting topic. And like I said, fiction, not instruction manual. <laughs> and, <laughs> and the question, the question now would be, how do you rein that in? If somebody were to actually want to do that, that genie is out of the bottle. It, that could well be. But for people unfamiliar with 1984, the literary work, it's on Amazon, as a for instance. It's easy to, to get. And George Orwell, of course, is dead. But uh, it's an easy read. It's a good story. It's fiction. It's just, and in its day, very few people could ever imagine such a scene, such a society ever coming into existence. It, it was, there was just no way. But today, we see some of the features of 1984 in our everyday lives. Even 1984, I don't think, imagined walls that had nanoparticles, basically, that, that are transponders sent and receive radio, wireless radio frequencies, which is what we're talking about, surrounding ourselves with. So the way to antidote that would probably uh, be a Faraday cage or copper, a paint that had copper over it to interfere with the nickel in the paint. <laughs> Crazy stuff. <laughs> Crazy stuff. Spy versus spy versus spy. <laughs> Literally, right. <laughs> but I'm not wearing the hat. Had, I, had, <laughs> I visited people in the past who had uh, surrounded their environments, created a perimeter in military terms. They had created a, a perimeter with thin, well, not that thin, fairly robust copper wire and interwoven and attached clear quartz crystals and other varieties of crystals. And I know Jen is into crystals big time, but oh, they yeah. wired up a combination Faraday cage with crystalline protective and, and also not only defensive, but could be used to project energies as well. So tactically correct environment and swore by this said that this was the only way that they could stop a general feeling of malaise, not feeling good, that all the waves and particles and nonsense in modern society were disrupting their abilities to function normally. So interesting stuff. Got to keep an eye on this stuff. Yes. So the article that I, the first article that I chose comes from vice.com. It is dated January 2nd, 2019. Washington could become the first state to compost the dead. A new bill wants to let your wants to let you turn your loved ones into soil. Elaborate death rituals are something that define our species, whether it's a casket, funeral, or coexisting with the corpse. And now Washington could become the first state to embrace another funerary practice by making it legal to compost the dead. The method is called recomposing, recomposing, and claims to be the cheaper and more environmentally friendly than traditional burial or cremation. It involves rapidly decomposing a body and converting the remains into soil. The nutrient-rich material can then be used to grow trees, flowers, and other new life. The alternative practice hinges on a bill that State Senator Jamie Penderson plans to introduce next month. 